Hi there. I thought, uh, after doing the vector graphic last month, that we should continue on with our obscure uh, technology companies. Uh, in the case of the vector graphic, it was just a uh, evolutionary design of the S100 and Z80 machines. In this case, uh, I'd like to present something that I believe is revolutionary. As far as I can tell, this is the first machine that incorporates a blade architecture like we are familiar with today. This is a Cubix. The model is an ERSFT. FT stands for Fault Tolerant. Uh, the Cubix Corporation was founded in 1975 and they actually got their start making S100 machines, or at least they began making S100 boards, uh, RAM boards, controllers, and then they started into Z80 CPU boards, things like that. They migrated on into uh, home machines. They started doing early x86 machines with Turbo DOS. They did some SysV Unix machines. And uh, as the 90s rolled on, they got more and more into Novel uh, networked DOS machines, which led on to these. The ERSFT is the first, I believe, of their uh, bladed machines. They are um, multi-computers, I think is the term they used. And they don't use the phrase blade. Blade really was coined by IBM. But um, it has eight SBCs, single board computers. And although the disks are not on board, which would be the only thing that would sort of have it step away from what we consider a blade now, Everything else is. They were standalone machines. They could be hot swapped. These machines were designed primarily for remote access stations. Usually, uh, what you would have is a modem bank sitting behind this, and each of the SBCs would be hooked to a single modem. And so they would run uh, a Novell or other networked DOS system, and they would be running something like PC Anywhere. Uh, this is, um, or this function is readily apparent because the boards and the supervisor is capable of resetting boards if it drops DTR, DCD. So if the modem drops and something funny happens, it loses connectivity to the modem, it'll actually, or it has the option to actually reset the computer itself. Um, so, I mean, that <laughs> makes it pretty obvious how coupled they were to the serial lines. Uh, why don't we have a wander around the machine? If we start at the front here, we have a single multiplexed drive. All of the boards were able to use this if the uh, board was enabled in the multiplexer. We'll get to that. The machines also had a supervisor. Um, the supervisor was used for watchdogging uh, if something looked out of place. Um, we're so used to it now that what these were uh, just seems so silly, but uh, fan voltage, things like that, if anything was out of the norm, it could reset board, shut the system down safely, so on and so forth. Uh, we'll also get to that in a tick. Uh, we look at the front interface to the multiplexer. Uh, if the system was uh, running, uh, by default the multiplexer was disabled, so there'd be a zero here, so you would enable it. And this would flip up to the one, which is the first group, and then you could cycle between them. Uh, they had a KVM cable on the back, which would then allow you, obviously, to cycle through which machine you were talking to at any given time. The difference between the ERS and the ERS FT was the FT came with more than one power supply. Unfortunately, one of mine has always been bad, uh, but one is good. There's 375 watt power supplies, AT, um, nice canister style, so it's easily hot swappable, and uh, locks so that you can disable the multiplexer. We wander to the back. We can see. Separate drops for the two supplies. The KVM um, would daisy chain between the chassis. You were able to stack chassis not only with the KVM but also with the supervisor. Uh, so you would, in 
out to the next one and so on on the way up. We have all of the boards here. The bus is primarily ISA. Uh, I have it configured in uh, eight groups of two, which means that there is two slots in each group. Uh, this is the processor board. Processor, processor. These are just Ethernet cards that I've jammed in there. This was a Beowulf cluster for me uh, when I was first learning about uh, Multics, things like that. Um, so it had a purpose for me. I don't know what the people before me did with it. I got it off eBay, but uh, presumably remote anywhere, uh, PC anywhere remote access. The system could also have a breakout box set up here, which would give you access to the extended ports. Parallel second keyboard and mouse. Uh, if we jump up, we can also see uh, they were mounted on slide rails, zap them in and out. Cubix also sold racks. You could buy a full height rack where you could stack. These are for your machines, uh, so you could stack a full rack of these. They also sold uh, quarter racks, so uh, in a quarter rack you could fit four of these. If we pop the tops off. junk and move the inside of the machine. So we have both power supplies. They could, I I don't believe these were hot swappable. I think if you wanted to pop them out you had to power down the system. Uh, screw here, lift, yank. Uh, my secondary one is the one that's bad for me so this is the one that's shot. Drive bay. No, I and I only have Two drives in there. Well, actually, only one hard disk, and then the SPCs themselves. So, as I said, the thing that differentiates these from what we'd consider a blade today is that the hard disks are not mounted in. So each blade has a series of connectors along the top that allows it to hook up to a center plane that's in this frame here. So we have keyboard, uh, the options. Things like that, floppy drive, all of this hooks in here, a hard disk. So we have the disk box here, and I don't think I can, oh no, it is loose, handy. There you are. You see they have these little pegs here, and they literally just pop out on the pegs. Of course, I'll never manage to get it back in blind, so Take my word that it just slides in there, and then this top cover latches them down. We have a floppy drive at this end, multiplex drive. Oh, my hard disk went over. A floppy drive at this end, it's the supervisor floppy drive. And then, and I've taken most of the cables out for uh, make it um, clarity to make it easier to understand, but you can see you've got all the power drops, and then there would be all of the uh, Atapi cables that would go to them. So, although they were not on board, uh, the discs that is, there was one disc per blade, they were easily maintainable, easily fiddleable, um, not hot swappable. So, if you wanted to replace a hard disc, you would have to power down the system, because I don't believe these shut down with the group. Perhaps they did, I might be mistaken. We have battery stores, the real-time clocks uh, and the CMOS batteries were not on board so they had AA batteries in these little pouches here they were then cabled through test the light 